Hey, Ashley here from Smart Edition Academy. And today in our video, we have a HESI review on ratios, proportions, and percentages. So in our video today, we will convert fractions, decimals, and percents, talk about real world percent problems, explain ratios, solve proportions, and talk about rate of change. Hey, please check out the links in the description of this video for some practice tests, our HESI Facebook group, our HESI bootcamp, and of course our HESI online course. Okay, so let's jump into this percents. So when we talk about percent, the word percent literally means out of a hundred. So percent, cent like a hundred cents in a dollar, a hundred years in a century, right? Percent means out of a hundred. So I like to use this proportion. So the part over whole, whatever we're given, the part over the whole is always going to equal our percent out of 100. So if we can set up this proportion, we can solve so many percent problems without having to remember a lot of little rules, okay? So when we talk about percents, we typically see them between zero and 100, but they can be greater than 100. They could even be negative. So if you think about, for example, we have a price increase by 20%, like your favorite shirt, unfortunately the price increase by 20%. That means that the new price is 120% of the original, okay? So it can be over 100 if it's more, right? 120% of the original means it increased by 20%. What happens if you have, say, the production of a company that makes, I don't know, water bottles, okay? If their production decreases by 45%, that would be represented by a negative 45. Their production shows a negative 45% production rate. Okay, so we can have between zero and 100, but it can also be greater than 100 and it can also be negative. So let's look at some examples. If 15 out of every 250 contest entries are winners, what percentage of entries are winners? Okay, so in this case, we could just take 15 over 250 and set that equal to a percent over our 100, right? That's our part over whole equals percent over 100. And then I could cross multiply 1,500 equals 250 times whatever the percent is. Let me just call it X so we could see that a little bit more obviously. And when I divide by 250, I will get six. So X equals six. Okay, that means that my percent is six, six percent. A shortcut here, okay, if you wanted a shortcut, really what we did is we just did 15 divided by 250 which is 0 0.06. And then to turn it into a percent, we swoop it twice, multiply by 100. Okay, the same steps get us to 6%. So 6% is the percentage of entries that are winners. Okay, so now let's talk about ratios. So ratios compare two quantities. For example, at the animal shelter, the ratio of dogs to cats is 5 to 3. Okay, so what that means is, let's just say like this, dogs to cats is five to three. You can also write that as a fraction five over three. However, it's important that you keep the correct order. Okay, order matters here because the ratio of cats to dogs is three to five, right? So this fraction would be three over five. Those are not the same. So what would happen if I asked you how many cats and dogs are at the animal shelter, okay? Do you think that you could answer me? Is there a way to find out? If we're only given the ratio, there's not enough information to solve this. So if I wanted to know how many animals were at the animal shelter, there could be five dogs and three cats, but there could be 10 dogs and six cats. That would be the same ratio. There could be 15 dogs and nine cats. That's all the same ratio, okay? So all of this is to say that just because we're given a ratio does not mean we can find the total number of 
whatever we're talking about. Okay, so here's an important example for ratio. So this says, if the ratio of women to men in an industry is five to four, how many people are in the industry, right? So the ratio is five to four. We wanna know how many people are in the industry. A question like this, we do not have enough information. Okay, so the ratio is five to four. That means there could be five men and four women, but there could also be 50 men and 40 women. There could be 500 men and 400 women. Okay, all of those would simplify to the same ratio of five to four, so we don't have enough information. Okay, so a proportion. Proportion is when two ratios are equal to one another. Oftentimes that can look like a fraction. For example, two thirds equals eight twelfths. So you might look at this and say, oh, well, that's also an equivalent fraction, right? I know this is equal because I can multiply the top and the bottom by four. So ratios are also equivalent fractions because they need to be the same. They need to be equal. So say I had three fourths and that equals something over 36. Well, how could I solve that? So there's a few different ways. If you maybe look and say, well, I know I have to do four times nine to get the 36. I could do three times nine to find x, or you could also just cross multiply to solve and do three times 36 and then four times x. So three times 36 is 108 and that equals four x. So if I divide by four, 108 divided by four is 27. So either way you do it, if you did cross multiplication, or if up here you just did three times nine, you should still get 27. Okay, so let's look at an example together. If a recipe calls for three parts flour and two parts sugar, how much sugar does a baker need if she uses 12 cups of flour? So three parts flour, two parts sugar can be written as the fraction three over two, and that has to be equal to how much sugar does she use for 12 cups of flour? So you just have to make sure you put the flour, in this case, if we put flour on top and sugar on the bottom, you have to keep that same rule. So flour would go on top, so that would be 12 over X is our sugar. So here, again, whichever way you wanna do it, we could cross multiply or use equivalent fractions. I'm just going to cross multiply. 3X equals 24, divide by three, you get X equals eight. Okay, x equals eight, so she would need eight cups of sugar. Let's try this example of solving a proportion. So what this means here is four to five is the same thing as 12 to x. Okay, so this is just telling me that I have two equivalent ratios, I have a proportion. So I'm going to rewrite this as a fraction, four to five is equal to 12 over x. Okay, and from here, we could cross multiply and try to find x. So four times x is four x, five times 12 is 60. Okay, and to get x by itself, I'm going to divide each side by four and find that x equals 15. So 15 is the x that would make this proportion true. Okay, last part of our video today, let's just talk quickly about rate of change. So rate of change shows how a quantity changes over time. And I want you to think about miles per hour. Miles per hour is a very common example. So say I drove 360 miles in six hours. What is my average speed over the six hours? So I would take the 360 miles that I drove and divide it by the six hours. Okay, 360 divided by six is 60. And miles over hours, right, that would be my units. That's the same thing as miles per hour. So when you have miles over hours, miles per hour, this would be 60 miles per hour would be your average speed. So how do we apply that to a question you might see on the HESI exam? Okay, here is a different type of rate of change problem. This says if the population of an endangered frog species fell, from 2,250 to 2,115 in a year, what is the annual rate of increase? So we need the annual rate of increase, okay? So in this case, I'm noticing that it's decreasing, okay? But the question is asking me an annual rate of increase. 
an increase would be positive, but a decrease would be negative. So I'm looking at these two as options that are still plausible. These two don't make sense. Okay, so now to figure out is it negative 135% or negative 6%, I need to find the difference. How much did it change? So if I subtract those two, I will get 135. And then what you need to do is put that over the original. Put that over the original, okay? And when I plug this in my calculator, I get 0 0.06. Turn that into a percent, okay? And that's 6%, but we said it needs to be negative because it's a decrease. Okay, hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.